As World War II was nearing its end, some of the Allies' best trained pilots spotted a strange phenomenon in the air. Glowing colored lights chasing their every move during a nighttime mission over the French-German border. But what happened on that cold November night in 1944 was only the beginning of America's love affair with unidentified flying phenomena, including the mysterious Foo Fighters. The U.S. Air Force 415th Night Fighter Squadrons had only been activated for a month when they arrived in England in March of 1943. The men of the 415th were among the most heavily trained aviators the Air Force had to offer, with a pristine reputation on their night operations. The American units began exchanging information with their Allied counterparts soon after their arrival, and despite being some of the best pilots in Europe, the 415th would eventually go through an otherworldly experience that shook them to their core. On November 27, 1944, on a partly cloudy night with a quarter moon, a flight crew aboard a British-made Bristol Bowfighter was flying over the Rhine Valley on the French-German border when they spotted a strange beam of light in the otherwise dark sky. Pilot Edward Schluter, radar observer Donald J. Myers, and intelligence officer Fred Ringwald claimed to have witnessed close to ten bright orange lights flying through the night sky at higher than normal speeds. The lights approached them through the aircraft's left wing, and they initially confused them for a German air weapon. Schluter then attempted to pass through them, and the lights suddenly disappeared into the air. When their radars failed to register any object in the vicinity of the strange phenomena, Operator Myers grew puzzled. Upon returning to their base, the Chicago native pulled out a Smoky Stover firefighter comic strip from his back pocket, slammed it on his pilot's desk, and referred to the lights as Foo Fighters, a nonsensical word used by the characters in the publication. Far from the last. After the strange November incident, Schluter, Myers, and Ringwald decided to keep the episode a secret from their fellow 415th colleagues, fearing they'd be ostracized or mocked in disbelief. However, it wasn't long before other members of the unit experienced similar sightings. Several crew members soon began describing beams of light flying alongside their aircraft at speeds of over 200 miles per hour. The beams would vary in color from red to orange to green and would appear in formations of up to 10 lights, often outmaneuvering the Allied aircraft they shadowed. According to one of the reports from these occurrences, the crews were, quote, followed by lights that blink on and off, changing colors, etc. The lights come very close and fly formation with our planes. They are agitating and keep the crews on edge when they encounter them, mainly because they cannot explain them. It is requested further information be furnished on this subject, such as similar experiences of other night units. Even though the lights were often called Kraut Fireballs in the European theater of operations, the term Foo Fighter eventually stuck. And despite numerous written accounts from some of the most well-trained Allied pilots, none of the lights ever appeared on radar. Aliens or Nazis By December, Associated Press reporter Robert C. Wilson arrived at the 415th base outside Dijon, France, to interview the men who had spotted Foo Fighters in the air, as he believed the phenomenon could be coming from some sort of advanced Nazi aircraft. Then, on December 13th, the New York Times published a press release written by the Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force in Paris, referring to the strange phenomenon as an enemy weapon. Quote, a new German weapon has made its appearance on the Western Air Front. Airmen of the American Air Force report that they are encountering silver-colored spheres in the air over German territory. The spheres are encountered either singly or in clusters. Sometimes they are semi-transparent. However, Wilson's story hit the newsstands on New Year's Day 1945 and hinted at the possibility of alien aircraft, setting off a world frenzy and prompting newspapers from all over the world to run accounts of the story with images of flying saucers in their front pages. Soon after, other theories about the incident surfaced, from Japanese weather balloons to pilot fatigue hallucinations and even strange weather phenomena similar to St. Elmo's fire. However, the crew members vehemently rejected these theories, especially as the explanations did not justify why the lights seemed to follow their aircraft's every move. The men were steadfast in their claims that the lights were real, airborne, and unlike anything they'd ever seen before or since, almost otherworldly. One of the most prominent theories surrounding the Foo Fighters was that Nazi Germany was behind it all. For one thing, the sightings all took place over occupied Europe, at a time when the Luftwaffe attacked Allied bases every day. To back the theory further, all sightings stopped after the war ended. 
The most compelling link that connects the Foo Fighters to Nazi Germany is the V-2 rocket. This rocket was developed by Werner von Braun, a wunderkind engineer who went on to become a leading scientist in the Cold War space race. Hitler used the long-range ballistic missile in 1944 against Belgium and other European territories, which could explain the colored glow as its tail emitted a long burning plume. However, according to military aviation author Nicholas Veronico, this explanation comes up short, and nothing in Nazi Germany's military aviation inventory can explain the Foo Fighter phenomenon, confirming that the V-2 rocket, quote, doesn't have the maneuverability. It couldn't turn on a dime and change its acceleration pattern. Once it started burning, it burned and produced thrust at one rating. The beginning of a love affair. Although the Army Air Command sent a team of officers to investigate the Foo Fighters, the research was lost after the war. In 1953, the newly formed Central Intelligence Agency convened a six-person panel composed of top American scientists with knowledge on experimental aviation technology, was to determine if the Foo Fighters constituted a national security threat. The Robertson panel, named after its chairman, physicist Howard P. Robertson, explored several possible explanations for the incidents, including electrostatic and electromagnetic phenomena, reflections of light from ice crystals, and enemy attacks. However, the investigation offered no concrete solution. Foo Fighters sighting reports eventually fell into the crackpot pseudoscience category. The effect of America's first real experience with unidentified flying phenomena would endure for decades. Only two years after reporter Wilson broke the story of the flying Foo Fighters over Europe, the Roswell incident took place. For the second time in only two years, American newspapers ran prominent stories about an Air Force balloon crash at a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico, filled with images of alien spaceships on their front pages. Since then, American culture's fascination with UFOs has only grown, but the government still refuses to confirm the presence of extraterrestrials. What the Allied pilots of World War II actually saw still remains unknown, and the mystery of the Foo Fighters is a reminder of the courage and heroism the soldiers demonstrated during one of the most complex wars in history, taking to the skies every night despite their ever-growing fears. <laughs>